I hope there isn't anyone crying about who, when, or where the Las Vegas Raiders are playing this year. I laugh every year when I hear fans say, the Raiders are getting screwed with the schedule. Listen, they pretty much play the same teams everyone else in the AFC West has to play. Teams play one game apiece against every team from two different divisions. Two games against each team in their own division. A couple of random games. But of course the Kansas City Chiefs schedule is easier than the Raiders because the Raiders have to play the Super Bowl champs twice. The Chiefs can't play themselves. And as for home and away games, they're scheduled around other events at these stadiums. There's no conspiracy to help the Chiefs and screw the Raiders. Either way, these are the games I've circled. Oh yeah, we start with week one against the Los Angeles Chargers. The first game of the season always gets circled, but when it's against the division rival Chargers, you gotta circle it twice. Then there's the fact that both teams have new coaches with a new physical identity. Last year when the two teams played in week two, both teams were dysfunctional and the Raiders lost 24 to 17. Then the Raiders got the head start on their culture change around mid-season last year with the hiring of Antonio Pierce as the interim head coach then. And when the two teams played in week 15, the Raiders beat the Chargers 63 to 21. The Chargers are getting their culture change going now. Head coach Jim Harbaugh has had a chance to get rid of some of what he doesn't like and bring in some of what he likes to the team. That means the Chargers are more physical than they were, but by how much? I don't know. We'll have to see how much Harbaugh put his stamp on the team by that time. That's the thing about this game. We'll see which team has more of the identity they want. I'll say this though. Pierce got a huge head start on Harbaugh. Week 2 against the Baltimore Ravens is going to be a good test to see where the Raiders are. The Raiders have become one of the most physical teams in the NFL and of course the Ravens are known as such. Then you have the division rival Denver Broncos and Pittsburgh Steelers in weeks 5 and 6. I really don't expect much from the Broncos but the Steelers, they did something if they beat them. They lost to the Steelers last year when McDaniels was their handicap, so we'll see what happens, but I want to go to Week 8 against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs will obviously look to avenge last year's loss at home by giving the Raiders a loss on their home field this coming season. The Chiefs have been good at giving the Raiders losses at home since they've been in Vegas. They're actually undefeated at Allegiant Stadium. After the big test in Baltimore, this will be the biggest test of the year. Obviously, if the Raiders can get a win here, they prove they can stomp with the big dogs of the NFL. It would be big to beat the Chiefs at home, too. They haven't done it yet. The Chiefs' O must go at Legion Stadium. A lot of Week 13 depends on where the Chiefs and Raiders are at the time. Okay, okay, it depends on where the Raiders are. We already know where the Chiefs are going to be. Will the Raiders be playing for the next franchise quarterback coming up in the draft? Will they be playing for a wild card spot in the playoffs or will they actually be in the hunt to win the AFC West? That would turn it up a notch or two. Last time the Raiders went to Arrowhead it was Christmas and the Raiders beat them up with physicality. The Raiders are going to be even more physical when they go this year but the Chiefs will be too because of the Christmas Day beatdown. They'll probably be more physical than they've been all season because the crowd at Arrowhead will be louder than usual and they're usually loud. Again that Christmas Day beatdown will be the reason for all this. Last year, the Raiders were the Christmas Day homecoming game for the Chiefs, and they upset them. This year on Black Friday, it'll be war. As Terrell Owens used to say, get your popcorn ready. The two teams just might be playing for something at the time, but their hatred for each other is enough to make this must-see TV. I circled Week 17 mainly for the Dramacidal fans and Derek Carr fans out there. I supported Carr when he was a Raider, but that's no longer, so I'm more interested in where the Raiders are at the time. My interest will drop considerably if the Raiders have themselves a playoff spot locked up and a lot of the starters don't play. At that point, it would turn into a big evaluation session for me. The Raiders have added players to have more depth, so it would be fun to see how some of them would do in the place of a starter. But of course, if the Raiders need a win to get into the playoffs, I'd be going crazy while I watch as usual. All Raider fans would be, and of course beating Carr to get into the playoffs would be extra, especially if a loss takes Carr and his New Orleans Saints out of the playoff picture. For me, it'd be all about the Raiders having the opportunity to go to the playoffs for just the third time since 2002. Former GM Dave Ziegler and head coach Josh McDaniels, the regime that got rid of Carr, they aren't even here anymore. That takes some of the luster out of it. I admit it'd be cool to see Max Crosby sack Carr though. There are some other big games on the schedule like the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 9 and the Miami Dolphins in Week 11. The Raiders give the Dolphins a much tougher game than they expected in Week 11 of last year. We'll get a chance to see what their year-to-year -year improvement is when they play and yes, it's another chance to see if the Raiders can stomp with the big dogs.
but I only did four in week one against the division rival Chargers had to be one of them. It's two teams trying to change their respective cultures. Which one is ahead? You have to circle both Chiefs games because of the hatred alone and the Saints. They have Derek Carr, whatever. Thank you for watching. See you next time.